Hello friends and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today I'm going to share with you why I'm going to change things up in during kidding season. I've decided that I'm going to bottle feed some of the babies and I'm going to explain to you why. I'm going to change my methods even though I do love goats that were damn raised or raised by their moms. But I have a goat that made me realize that I needed to change everything as far as how I was, how I was handling some of this kidding, some of these moms. And it has nothing to do with their ability to really raise their own, but it has everything to do with numbers. And that's exactly what I want to explain to you here in this video in the hopes not only to help you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, but also if you're in a situation like that, maybe some of my research, my numbers will help you decide if this is something that you want to try for yourself. Most of you know that we had quads two times with two different mamas this past kidding season. One of them was Clara and she delivered three boys and a girl and if you missed her birth day really and everything that happened I'm gonna have that video link on the top of the screen and also I'm gonna have mochas who also had four boys out of those four boys I had to keep one because he wasn't healthy enough to move to a new home and this is the reason why I want to do it this was the only boy I didn't sell out of the last kidding season. But this is what I'm trying to avoid right now. And that's exactly what I want to explain to you, I guess, in this video. Now, if you didn't know, or I didn't know the numbers behind how much a baby goat is supposed to be eating, and it's based on their weight. So, for example, a baby goat, once it's born, it needs 5% of its weight in the first six hours and then 10% of its weight in the first 24 hours so you can do the 5% within the first six hours and you can do the other 5% during the rest of that very first 24 hours or you can divide it as you want but basically that is the minimum that they have to eat the first 24 hours you can go up to 20% so just so you have an idea, if you have a baby goat that is only three pounds, you have to multiply by 16 to get it in ounces. And basically what they need is about 4.6, I can't remember if it's 4.6 or 4.8. I will correct myself in the screen if that's what it is. I didn't bring the paper that stated that, but um, that's how much it needs in the first 24 hours. After that, it is recommended that you feed them 15% of their weight. So if you're, and I have my paper here, if your baby goat is three pounds, then you have, if you are going to do 15% of its weight, then you do 7.2 ounces in 24 hours. So you're gonna have to divide it into four or five different bottles. And if you want to do 20%, which is what I'm gonna do for my baby goats, then you need to feed 9.6 ounces from day two okay so as your babies are growing they need that 20 percent every 24 hours you shouldn't go over that 20 percent that is the maximum that you're gonna feed them and it's really relative to their weight so if you want to do this you probably have to be checking their weight every week and that's what i'm gonna be doing to make sure that i'm feeding exactly what they need according to their weight but here's the part that convinced me that i need to bottle feed and i'm gonna go into who i'm gonna bottle feed by 10 pounds okay you're gonna have to feed if you're doing the 20 percent of their weight you're gonna have to feed 32 ounces a day and yes 32 ounces is half a gallon so here's my thinking I'm only gonna bottle feed if there is more than three babies or if one of the babies is struggling in my experience I've had singles I had twins I had triplets and I have I've had quads and in my experience mom can do great with one can do great with two and can definitely do great with three 
If you haven't watched, Annabelle had triplets this year, two girls and a boy. I'll link her uh, birth video over here as well if you want to check that out. But she did it by herself. I was actually planning to attend. I was milking outside and in that time she just decided to have those babies one after the other and I missed it. I found them when they all were all still wet. So she did a great job not only delivering but caring for those kids. Annabelle, she is surprising me more and more with each kidding. She uh, weaned her babies at around 10 weeks old. She didn't let them nurse anymore. And those kids are, out of this last kidding seasons, are the best in weight, the healthiest. And the ones that I really didn't even have to try to wean because she did such an amazing job. So. I am really proud of Annabelle, not only to being a great mom, doing everything by herself, but knowing exactly when to say no more. So, here is the change that I'm going to do for this next kidding season. And I'm going to show you because there's only one goat that I didn't sell from this past kidding season. It's a boy, it was one of the quads, and he seriously was going to die. If I sold them, um, number one, I couldn't sell him. Because in my mind, I can't sell a goat that I'm not 100% sure that is 100% healthy uh, in my standards. I'm not saying that they are not going to get sick in the hands of other people. But when I sell them, they are healthy. I've checked their FAMACHA score. They've been dewormed. They, they had all their shots. They've been despotted more than once if it didn't work. I mean, I try my very best. And for the most part, giving them the best start, it really helps them to be healthy when they're older to be more parasite resistant and you know all those things that we want to see in a healthy goat so when I kept toad which is mocha squad I knew that I just couldn't sell him he was the quad that was the smallest the one that didn't have enough energy to fight over a teat I did give him a bottle here and there, but I was not consistent and he paid the price um, for that because he just didn't get enough milk. He was very stressed. He was not growing. He got uh, coccidiosis, which stunned his growth. Right now he's seven months old and I don't know, he's probably 15 pounds and it's a tiny little thing. I'll show you um, in a little bit, but he really um, had a rough start of life and I blame myself for it because I've read these articles, I've read these charts, I've read everything but I never paid attention to the numbers so now that I'm looking to the numbers I am seeing what I did wrong. There is absolutely no way that Mocha was gonna be able to feed 32 ounces to each of those baby goats. That would mean 24 ounces per kid. So if you multiply that by four, it's still a lot of milk. She was a second freshener. She really hasn't developed to the point of producing the most amount of milk that she can. And hopefully this year being her third freshening, she will. But I can't expect her to feed a baby goat half a gallon of milk. And now, there's a lot of details that I will be sharing with you in another video. I'm gonna do specific numbers of how much I'm gonna feed them according to their weight, the times, why, when is it gonna start, when is it gonna stop. And it's actually a very thought out process that I was able to put together after reading enough information, enough data that other people have collected and in the end it's going to help me make a better decision. So I will share all those details in another video but I really did want to share with you and show you exactly why I made this decision. If this next kidding season they have triplets and they're healthy and they're happy and mom loves those kids, they will not be bottle babies. But I have a feeling that Clara will give us quads again. And it's likely that Mocha will too. Is it a guarantee? No. Um, but for Clara's record, 
it could happen so if it does happen i have specifically created a plan now in the month of december so when the kids are born in the month of march it's going to be so much easier to have everything on hand that i'm gonna need to know exactly how much i need to feed not only for me but if for my kids if they're gonna help me how the process is gonna look like where they're gonna live what you know all of those decisions that for me and my personality it takes me a really long time to make a decision a final decision I'm always researching more, researching more, researching more, but in the end, I need to make a decision. And I made that decision today. Now there's going to be a series of small decisions that I'm going to put it to paper. And then when March comes and I'm overwhelmed with all the girls having, you know, kidding at the same time, then I have a specific plan in case that we have quads now i'm gonna leave this feeding chart in the description down below this is not something i came up with it looks terrible because it just got wet while well, i was trying to clean the floors because yeah so um just so you have an idea i will be giving i will be making this other video i'm gonna tell you exactly how many bottles they're gonna eat and how often you know all those details that may be helpful for somebody out there if you have a smaller scale dairy or if you have a smaller scale herd i understand that if you have hundreds of goats this is probably not going to work for you but i did want to share my side of things now i don't want to offend anybody that raises quads on their moms i've seen plenty of people that do it and i think that their goats are amazing for doing it but what i've seen is that there's always one that is paying the price it's always one that is surviving but it's not thriving and there's always one that is kind of being left behind and that's exactly what i don't want for my goats um it's not their fault that they're quads it's not their fault that you know it, you might have like a an overachiever over producer goat but I just want you to think about the ounces. If you milk your goats, check the ounces that you're milking your goat out. Like when you wean your kids, how many ounces are you getting from each one of them? Is it 32 ounces in total in the morning and 32 ounces total at night? Um, I mean, Nigerians are good producers, but these numbers that I'm looking at here, if they have quads, they would have to be some of the most productive Nigerian dwarf, probably in the top 10% of production um, that it's in record in Adga. So <laughs> they probably will have to be that amazing to be able to raise them all healthy to the same weight and not leaving anyone behind. This is my experience as always. It's it's going to vary depending on, on your dose, on your situation, where you live, what you do. But this is what I've learned in a couple of kidding seasons. And this is what I'm gonna do. I have big plans for the month of March. I am planning to do vlog March. And I'm gonna be doing um, daily videos i think monday through friday that's it and i'm gonna be sharing with you the process from you know a couple of weeks before they start kidding what they do what we do how we check them where they're gonna be you know put when they're gonna kid how many days are they gonna stay in their kidding pens the babies how i track the data for the babies and all those things that maybe they kind of um slipped through the cracks last kidding season and it made me realize that uh, you know not only i was more stressed um but i was also not being a good steward to these kids and i have to mention this too next kidding season i'm going to be sharing all the totals of pounds and ounces that each one of my goats produce and i think that's going to be also very interesting data not only for me but also for you if you're planning to do this helping you see the production of a six-year-old goat versus a three-year-old goat a two-year-old goat a one-year-old goat i think it's going to be all 
good information and it's also gonna help me in future kidding season so I hope that I could make myself clear I really thought about this video and I thought about sharing the information in so many different ways but in the end um, I just brought my my poor feeding guy and <laughs> I ended up sharing from my heart what I what I think is right for us so if you're new and you'd like to see more videos like this, if you want to be here for Vlog March, where I'm gonna be sharing all that information that I hope it will be useful for somebody else or at least entertaining, please remember to subscribe, like this video, and if you don't mind, leave a comment, tell me that you're there, share something with me. I love to read your comments. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.